Hello everyone, this is Gail, and if you've been watching my tutorials, you'll remember that I just did one on the this block. It was a like a geometric block made from three different shades of the same color clay. What I did is I took a dark blue and then I added 50%, I took part of it and added the same amount of white and came up with this light blue. Then I took this light blue and added some uh, rhino gray and came up with this dusty color and, it, and then cut it with a, uh, I may have put it away, with a diamond shape cutter. And then you take these diamond shapes and you put them together to make these boxes. Well, after I finished that doing that, and it was a very short tutorial, um, I got to thinking there ought to be a way to put this into a cane. So I have taken the leftover clay from that, pro uh, that project, and I extruded it with my diamond shape die in my Macon's extruder. And I'm going to see about putting this together. Now, I think I'm going to try, let me put it together this way first. I love the way they, they just fit together. And straighten up the ends. And then let me see how big this is. This is seven and a quarter inches. Um, seven and a quarter would be three and five eighths, I believe, if I cut it in half. And I'm going to cut it in half again. It was almost, I was almost right. So I've got three and five eighths. So three and a half would be, well, let's go back to three. Halfway from three inches would be one and a half inches. So then I've got another half an inch. So I'll come in a quarter of an inch, which is half of that, and then an eighth. So that's going to be like a sixteenth. So I'm just going to cut it right about there. So that I'll have eight pieces and we're going to go from there. So let me put this together and just see how it's going to work. I'm going to start with my main color because I want that to be on top. Then I'm going to take my half and half white mixture and put it along there. And then I'll take the dusty color And see these diamond shapes just fit in real nicely together. And that gives me my box. So I'm going to do this a couple of times. Once you figure out the direction that your diamonds have to go in, it's really simple to do. And just make sure that they match up all the way down on all the sides. So that's two. Let's do a third one. And just make sure that when you're working on it, that you work on look at the top and the bottom, and then that the rest of it all kind of matches up along the way. So I'm going to leave this. I'm not too sure yet how that's going to work out. Let me see. Let me put my... I think that's my top side. 
put my tops together and I'm going to put this one with the top. I'll make sure that your colors all go in the same direction for all of your boxes or you're going to lose that box effect. So there's three. Now what I want to do is try to make this square. So I'm not really sure how this is going to work. This would have to come down here. Um, I may go ahead and put this one together also. I'm not sure how I'm going to make this square. But I'm going to try. Sorry if that went out of frame. I was just kind of looking at it. So if I put this one in like this. And again, make sure your bottoms meet up. What I was thinking is I could put triangles of something in here. Well, let's see. If, oh, I've got this one upside down. My colors didn't look right. But if I look at this between, if I have this one and this one, which is the same as this, I've got a blue one that fits in here. And that's kind of what I was hoping to do, was to do that. But let's just do it this way. Let's cut this in half. And this is just an experiment on my part, so please bear with me. Let's see, this has to go this way. Got to make sure that your gray and your blue and your light blue are all in the same direction. Actually, it goes this way. And how am I going to put this together? Some of these corners are losing its Christmas probably because I the way I sliced it. And let's see, if I do this, but you see what I'm doing, I'm kind of building on what I had. I think I'm going to pull this out if I can. and put it in here. If I would cut it differently, I'd have had another one to put in here, but I didn't. But anyway, there is a cane. Now what I would do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to come up with a coordinating color. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little samples from my tutorial and take the scraps from all of my colors and I'm going to blend these together to come up with a coordinating color. And you know it'll coordinate because it's the same colors that's in here. So let me blend this together and try to figure out what I'm going to do, and then I'll be right back. 
Okay, while I was blending this color, I got to thinking that I would go ahead and extrude the same shape out of this mixture of clay. Now, you don't have to use the scrap. You can use white. If you want to make this into a quilt square, and I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a series of quilt squares, and then after I do a couple, then I'm going to put them together into a project. So this might be the first of my, my quilt squares, but I'm going to put, I'm just going to cut these into equal slices, or maybe not equal, but close to it. And the object is to make this, to make this square. So let me start filling in some of these little crevices. And as you can see, it's a little bit skinny, narrower than I thought it was, but that's okay. And I'm going to start with the diamonds. And I may get to a point where I have to use a different shape. And make sure your corners here are straight or your diamond is not going to fit into it. I'm going to put another one in here. Actually, I'll go ahead and do both of them and cut them both at the same time. But this is getting me a little bit closer to the square shape that I'm looking for. And like I said, you can do this in white if you'd rather do white. And let me just straighten, you know, flatten these edges out a little bit. And I will put one in here. Just trying to even up the edges. Okay, so now we have our blocks. It's sort of in a one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, an octagon shape, which might work. But what I'm going to do now is take the rest of this blended clay and turn it into a sheet. I'm not going to stop the camera again because it won't take but a minute to do this. I want to even up these edges so I'm going to fold them in like that. This is just a little trick, and it's, I don't even think anybody showed me this one. It's just something I figured out a long time ago. But this is on a number three. And I'll go down to a number five, because I want this to be fairly thin. take this and I'm going to wrap this around and I'll start at one corner. Maybe I better make this a little straighter before I start wrapping. And 
just start at a corner and start wrapping and just give it a little gentle press with your thumb to try to make sure that you're squeezing out the air See, I think I'll stop with the one wrap. And I think I will use white. That's probably going to be the unifying color of all of the quilt squares that I'm going to do. So I'm going to just trim this off. If I can get in there. And it doesn't matter if you slice off little pieces of the cane because it's uneven anyway. And it'll just give you more scrap to play with. So now what I think I'll do, I'm, first I'm going to press this on all of the sides. I'm going to use an acrylic block. And I'm just going to press this. Get it into its shape. I'm kind of doing designing this as I go along, so I apologize if it seems to be a little choppy. And here is where I will start using my white. So I'm going to condition some of this white and roll out some that we can use in our design, and then I'll be back. Okay, I went ahead and just rolled the rest of my white. It's the end of my white, unless I have another block, which I do. I have, it's black that I'm out of. This is my last block of black, so I'm going to have to be getting clay soon. But what I want to do, some of this I probably ought to leave in a sheet. But I'm going to shape some of it, and I'm starting, we notice as I'm folding it, I'm pinching it from the center out so that it squeezes out any air. And I'm going to make this into a triangle. And I may have to change this shape. I'm just thinking a triangle right now would probably work well in making this square. But it needs to be wide, and I don't think I'm going wide enough with this, so I'm going to have to kind of push down a little bit and make my bottom part of the angle a little bit wider. And just, just trying to press it down on my work surface so that the sides will be fairly flat. But leaving this wide section. So let me see how this is going to work. Looks like it still needs to be wider, so let me come out this way a little bit more. But what I want to do is on each of these flat sides, I want to put a white triangle.
Okay, so that's giving me a corner. So this might work. Like I say, I'm kind of doing this as I'm doing the video. It's not something I planned out. But I can put another corner there. And then if I do two more, I think this is going to work. When I was looking at quilt patterns, and I saw this one in there, I thought, well, I already just did this with the little trying diamond shapes. So let's try making it into a cane. So that's kind of how this came to be born. Let me flatten this and spread it out a little bit more. Okay, so this gives us more of a square shape. And I said I was leaving this in a sheet form because I'm going to put this in between to kind of fill in the space. Although this one's a little wide. I've, I need wide ones and I need skinny ones. And this is the skinny one. I'm just going to lay that in there. And I'll lay, lay it in there. You saw me just rip it off. Half the time that's what I do, but most of the time I cut it. So that is giving us the square shape that we need to reduce it. But you notice there's only white on one side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this sheet. This is on a number one, which is the thickest setting of the pasta machine. Or, let's see, nine cards. I'm going to fold this in half and run it through one time. Still on the number one. <laughs> Then I'm going to go down to a number three. And let's see. That'll only go around it once. I'll need some. So I'm going to go to a number five. See now I have a long, thin, white strip. And I'm going to just start wrapping. And I'm going to wrap this. Let me straighten this edge. But I'm just going to start wrapping. Just press it in. Actually, I'm going to slice it here and cut off this excess because 
I didn't put the thick strips on the other side of my cane so I want to make sure there's enough white clay there that I can slice Sorry about that. My brain is working faster than the project can, <laughs> which is something I do quite often. My brain never seems to turn off. And sometimes I get ahead of myself. So I'm going to put a strip let me trim it first. Okay, I'm going to put a strip on this side, which is the side where there was not the white corners. The white corners are on these ends. And I'll do another one on the other side just to add a little more white so it'll be a little more balanced. So now I've got that extra sheet of white on this side. So now I will continue wrapping. sure you press it in so that you know you're trying to eliminate all these little spaces that kind of appear and then trim it off and this will be our first cane for our quilting project and I'm not going to say what the project is because I'm liable to change my mind before we get there let me just finish trimming this off This is our first quilt square. Of course, it will be reduced. It'll be smaller than this when we finish. But try to maintain, when you reduce it, try to maintain the proportions of your block. You don't want your block to lose its, its shape. And I do believe, there they go. I couldn't find the top. I was going to say I lost my top, my block. But I'm going to let this rest. I'm not going to do like I normally do with you guys and try to rush through something and then it ends up being a mess. I am going to put my clean white clay in one place and my blue and white mix in another place. But I'm going to let this rest and then I'm going to reduce it but this is our first quilt block and I 
forgot what this is called. I just called it a block pattern, but and that might be the name of it. But this is our first pattern. Let me come in close just a little bit so you can kind of get a better look. There's our first quilt block. And this is going to be fun. I hope you're going to enjoy this when it's done. There's so much, so many people that do quilting. And uh, I know, stop reducing, Gail. But I'm not going to touch it anymore. I'm going to let it sit. But this is our quilt block. And I hope you like this because it's going to be a, a long project. When I say long, I'm, I have like three or four different designs. I want to, you know, quilt blocks. Some of them are a little too complicated to convert into polymer clay because the parts are too little. But I have found some that have some larger parts. Like, like this one. This was one that had larger pieces. So I'm going to be uh, showing you some other blocks. If you have any that you'd like to see me try, please let me know. You can comment below on, the, on this video and let me know of any other quilt blocks. But just be aware of the date of the video. If you're This is in May. It's May 24th of 2018. So if you, want to, if you are watching this in 2019 and want to make a suggestion, sorry, it's already been done. But if you're watching this, you know, currently in May of 2018, then you'll be able to see, uh, you know, participate and make any suggestions for any kind of quilt squares that you would like to see us try. So I hope you like this and come back again next Monday for another quilt square and we will continue our project. This is Gail Thompson. Thanks for visiting me. Bye-bye.